Hello everyone. How are you? I know it's been a while since I've um, had a chance to speak to everyone. I've been uh, very busy uh, on a number of different things. Uh, thanks for subscribing. For those who have subscribed, I, I do appreciate it and I do appreciate um, your feedback, your questions. Um, I see an earnest interest in a lot of people to really um, try to understand um, this field. So what I want to do just now is uh, give an overview of um, some terms uh, that are used to define the uh, different regimes in astronomy. So it's very useful to, to have that under your belt. And uh, Armed with that, you can kind of go to any astronomy magazine and, and quickly assess what branch of astronomy a given subject is in, a given article is in. So let's talk about the scales of um, astronomy. Associated with that, I'll interchangeably use the word physics. Um, there's uh, space physics, uh, there's astronomy. So there's exobiology, you've heard the term cosmology, astrophysics. So what is all of these? Let's just bring these pieces together. Now let's start with the, the biggest picture, the term cosmology, which is the study of the entire universe. How is the universe formed? How will the universe end? How is the universe evolving? What are some of the basic structures of, of that? Now this area is the one that um, is of course the largest scales uh, furthest from us involves the most theoretical aspects, the most speculative aspects of physics. Uh, we're dealing with um, parts of the universe that go well beyond what's explained by conventional slash classical physics. Um, galaxies are islands of stars. These islands of stars, i.e. galaxies themselves, form clusters. And that's kind of the, uh, the organization. And as you know, the universe is expanding. Um, it resulted as an explosion. You've heard the term Big Bang. We've got all these universes, um, sorry, all these galaxies moving out from some um, sort of origin you might think of as an origin in, in time. So uh, how that's happening, how that's evolving um, is cosmology. There's some interesting uh, artifacts of, of this area, such as black holes. Um, you've all maybe heard of white holes, but these are postulated to exist, but have not yet really been found, and good reason to believe they never will be. Uh, we also have um, the question of uh, dark matter and dark energy, and these terms come up a lot. and. Uh, I, uh, one dark energy you might think of as a repulsive force, in fact, pushing the universe apart so that uh, in this vision the universe is hopelessly pushed apart, it'll never come together again. Uh, dark matter is, um, is a postulated entity, it's, it's a postulated matter to explain some of the motions we've observed in galaxies. Uh, it's dark because we can't see it. It's dark because it's optically inert. Light does not reflect from it, scatter from it, or give it off. So there's a lot of explanations to what dark matter is, but dark matter itself is something postulated to kind of uh, do some bookkeeping at the galactic level. Um, within the galaxy you have um, clusters of stars. You get into a field called astrophysics, which really focuses on stars, the formation of stars, the evolution of a star, the death of a star. Um, there's two really two types of stars. Um, there's high mass stars and low mass stars. The sun turns out to be a low mass star. A high mass star has a very interesting life. It, after it's finished um, with its normal main sequence, and um, what does that mean? Again, something that 
can be explained. By the way, feel free to ask me questions, and uh, you can focus me because, as you see, I'm uh, just about all over the universe here. Um, large stars will end up undergoing a very violent final life. If it's very large, it can explode into what's called a supernova. What will remain is a neutron star or even a remnant um, if the explosion is big enough and the forces of compression are large enough. The core of the star can actually turn into a black hole. So you've heard the term black hole and uh, it's, it's a rather, uh, it's always a well-defined entity. So astrophysics involves uh, a mix of nuclear physics, statistical mechanics, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, because to understand how a star works, its energy source really is coming from um, hydrogen fusion or some other form of fusion. And of course that energy has to permeate through the star, and the star itself is a big ball of gas, highly compressed, so it acts like a fluid. So you have to deal with convective layers and other things. And of course, on the outside of the stars, they're really kind of messy. You've got um, m movement of large hot gases, uh, creates magnetic effects. Uh, you get particles ejected. You know about solar storms. So this is astrophysics. And when we talk about the sun in particular, we're talking about solar physics, which there's uh, lots of observations made of the sun through spacecraft, by Earth observations. Um, of course, it has very practical importance to us. So that's a regime of um, astrophysics, of star physics, solar physics. Then, of course, we have a regime of um, here we are in a nice little universe.